I think I might be doing one of the most out of character things I've ever done on YouTube. I am not only selling one of my best young players in Badia Chile for 54 million, but his replacement is 37 years old. Yeah, I don't know if I'm feeling okay either. Yes, folks, how is it going? And welcome back to Atalanta. Today we have episode number 32 of this series, Rebuilding a Club, which at this point probably have been rebuilt. But today we are back. It is January. Transfer window is open. And today we have the Italian Super Cup. And then we're going to do the game against Genoa. I ummed and ahed about teams to take on. But in the end, I feel like a good test for our B team will be taken on Genoa, whose media prediction was 14th. But currently... They are up in seventh. They're having a party. They are overperforming. Now, as I already mentioned in the intro, Badia Chile on his way out. £54 million potentially to Juventus. 23 years old, a fan favourite, a player though who is unhappy at the club, wants to move on. And I feel like we already have a replacement for in Scalvini. I mean, if we just compare Badia Chile in green to Scalvini in blue, the 21 year old is arguably a better player. I think as, in terms of wide centre backs, he is a better player. Unfortunately, He's not left-footed, so maybe that's one downside because we're going to have to play a right-footed player at left centre-back. But yeah, Badia Chile, 54 million. I just feel like that's too good of an offer to turn down. And well, for as good as he's been this season, I don't think he's irreplaceable. Now, I already talked about Scalvini being kind of the natural replacement in terms of in the starting eleven, but we do still need to get in a backup defender of sorts to fill the gap. I found that backup defender, Leonardo Bonucci. So, uh, yeah, Juve are going to sign Badia Chile and we're going to sign Benucci back. Uh, we've already agreed him to join us on a pre-contract, but I do have the option to buy him now for just over a million pounds. Ultimately, the 37-year-old is going to come in to be an emergency backup of sorts. It's a two-year deal, but I love the fact he's got 20 leadership, 20 determination, perfectionist personality. I think with our really, really young squad... Just having someone as influential as Benucci in can only be a good thing. And as a kind of fifth or sixth choice centre-back option, he is more than adequate in my opinion. Now, of course, if Badia Chile leaves us for that 50 million and I bring in Benucci, we suddenly have 50 million left over and we've already got 20 million in the bank. I have got a plan of sorts with that. The plan itself, not one that we can immediately spring into action, but my big hope, dream and aspiration is next summer, Bastoni will be signed by us. Started his career at Atalanta. Right now, you can see his value is around 92 million. Last summer, it was closer to 60 million. But because we are halfway through the season, teams always hike up their prices in Football Manager in the January transfer window. I assume you've experienced this. This year in game, if you want to sign someone midway through a season, unless they're transfer listed or their contract's running out, it's often very difficult to negotiate. And I do look at Bastoni. I look at the fact he's left-footed and I think you would be the perfect signing in the summer. I really want you in the summer. And well, selling Balia Shade now for 50 million combined with the 20 million we already have in transfer budget should make that hopefully a more than possible transfer to do when we get around to the summer and he's maybe a little bit cheaper. Anyway, that's a little bit of the transfer business going on. You might have noticed one other signing in the thumbnail, and that is Mattia Perrin, who is, of course, another player snatched away from Juventus. We have picked him up on, well, basically a free transfer. We agreed to sign him on a pre-contract, then exercised a buy now option. We've got him in for 550k at 32 years old. He's just a good, experienced Italian goalkeeper, former Italy international and, uh, well, Gallini, he's a little bit unhappy that I've not been selling him for the last few months. Um, I'm kind of glad to get Perrin in, who undoubtedly is a downgrade. But if I can now go on to sell Gallini for one of those offers that we had last summer of kind of 15 to 20 million, I'd be quite happy with that. Now, of course, you might have spotted it in the top right. We are halfway through January, so there could still be a little bit more transfer business going on. Who knows? For all... That could happen to me, Badia Chile will just turn down Juventus and we'll be stuck with him. But I'm starting to put the cogs into motion into a bigger plan for next summer with Bastoni. And uh, well, with that in mind, we should probably talk about what's been going on the pitch. The more immediate future, the more, I guess, pressing matters at hand. Of course, last episode we beat Napoli. No, we didn't. We didn't beat Nap we We beat Liverpool. We got battered by Napoli. That's what happened. It was a good win against Liverpool. Since then, Largely good. Of course, you can see here the month of December packed with Serie A games. We'd be Empoli, uh, Venezia uh, and then Roma. Three really convincing performances, to be honest, scoring at least three goals in all of them. We then had our final Champions League group stage game against Sevilla. We won it. And with that, we actually topped the group, which is really, really nice to see. Liverpool having slipped up earlier on in the group stage 
could only finish down in second. So we got an easier draw in the Champions League because we had to play a team in second. Did we get an easier? No, we didn't get an easier draw. Of course we didn't get an easier draw. I got drawn against PSG in the Champions League. Knockout stages that take place next month. You could probably hear some of the excitement in my voice there. After the game against Sevilla, we took on Inter Milan, a bit more of a challenging game, and well, it kind of proved to be that. They were the better team in this game. We didn't show up very well, but a 3-2 defeat is all that we could succumb to in the end, and an 86th minute winner for them, in a game which I thought we were going to steal away a draw in. It didn't happen. It was our second defeat of the season. The good news is, since then, we look rather good. 6-2 against Torino, a 5-0 win followed, and then most recently, Brescia, which was a game I maybe talked about doing, but then I saw Genoa decided that was a bit more sexy. Um, I kind of wish I'd done this match. It was bonkers. 2-0 down at half-time, got shouty-shouty, got angry, got mean. Almada scored a hat-trick, including a third from the penalty spot. Tonali then got one really late on, and we won 4-2. So, yeah, really, really great comeback. Almada getting three goals in this game. If we now look at his seasonal stats, they suddenly look quite good. Six goals, four assists in 13 games. Definitely worth each and every penny. Just ignore the fact half of his goals came in the most recent game. That doesn't matter. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. Remember Zach Hyen as well. Signed a new deal recently. Really happy with that new deal. He was in great form. I don't think he scored or got an assist since. He might have got a couple of assists, actually. Basically, he signed a new deal and now... I'd kind of regret giving him it because well, he's just stopped playing since he started securing the bag, which is annoying. Elsewhere, we do have a new highest earner at the club. We're definitely at that point in the save game where players want more and more money. Benjamin Sesco has received a wage rise to go on to 145000 He is now the new highest earner. I kind of had to give him this contract because he's been absolutely amazing for us. And well, what makes things even more amazing is he won the Ballon d'Or. I don't know either. Um, look, Immobile won the Ballon d'Or the previous two years ahead of Mbappe and Haaland. And then this year, Sesco won it. Raspadori got second and then Immobile got third. I don't quite know how Sesco's done it. I mean, his rating is good. I, I say it's good. That's a bit <laughs> harsh, isn't it? He's got 37 goals and 15 assists in 42 games. He's very, very bloody good. And of course, with all the injuries we've had in the striking department, he's been so far this year the only real consistent player. But... Even I'm a little bit surprised to see him win the Ballon d'Or. It's weird how Raspadori got runner-up as well. I do feel like awards in Football Manager are a bit random at times. Let me know your thoughts. But they definitely do just feel weird and a bit arbitrary. So just looking at the current standings in the league table at what is almost the halfway point. One game left to mark the halfway point in the season. 16 wins, 2 losses, 20 goals against, but the 55 goals scored for is kind of what stands out to me. We are averaging, I think, just over three goals a game, which is absolutely mad. Long may that continue, because it makes for more entertaining matches when you score lots and lots. As I've already mentioned today, we are going to be taking on Genoa, who are currently up in seventh, the middle of the table. is very, very close with these teams, so they're going to be desperate to get a win. But to kick things off today, a slightly more pressing game, I suppose. Look, we're taking on Lazio. It's the Italian Super Cup final. I skipped out on this final last year and it was an absolute banger um, when we took on Inter and won after extra time. Couldn't afford to miss it again. So yeah, that's what we're going to kick off with today. So when it comes to our team, we are going to go with what I think when Badia Shade leaves is going to be our best starting 11. It's the starting 11 that you know and love, but the one exception, of course, is Scalvini, who is going to be playing as that wide centre-back out on the left-hand side. He is right-footed, but it's not like he's right-only footedness. Obviously, it'd be nice if he was either footed, but beggars can't be choosers. But in terms of some of his traits, I think they actually work really, really nicely for a wide centre-back. So far this season, he has been superb. Today's going to be a little bit of a taster, I suppose, as to what we might have to expect from him for the rest of the season. Anyway, we are going to see how we get on here. Taking on Lazio, of course, last year Lazio were a real thorn in our side. And whilst they're still a good team, Immobile hasn't been in the same form. Why is the ball so hard to see? Can you guys see the ball? Am I going crazy or is that ball horrible? Can you? I think I can see it. It'll be fine. But what, why is the ball pink? I have so many questions. Now, that is really awful to see, isn't it? Please tell me I'm going 2D. I'm going 2D. It's a big day. The 2D fans in the in, in the comments are now just pumping their fists. We're, go we're going 2D. I can't see the ball very clearly. And if I can't see it, I've got to then produce a video for YouTube where it'll probably be difficult to see as well. Hopefully, it's a little bit better for you guys in 2D. We will have the 3D highlights. Apologies to the 3D massive. I'm sure you'll understand why I've just had to change it. Um... 
I can't remember what I was going to say now. I was going to say something about how Lazio have been good this year, but not as good as they were last year. And with that in mind, I do expect us to win this one. That was a good chance for Raspadori. Probably should have scored it. Anyway, Mancini puts in a tackle, wins back the ball. I feel like Mancini, I've not really talked about much this year. Of course, he had pretty big boots to fill in Soleil's. And, well, he's just taken to the role so well. It's kind of one of the reasons why I feel so comfortable uh, getting rid of Badia Chile now as well. Is that a penalty or is that a free kick? It looked like a penalty. I mean, Patrick should surely be given a red card for that professional foul. Is it in or outside the box? Apparently it's outside the box. Surely that has to be a red card. That was a professional foul, right? I'm not going crazy. Maybe I am. Maybe I already am crazy. DeMarco, free kick. You score these. He hasn't really scored one this year, but maybe today's going to be the day. The left mid, he's really, really ramping up the tension here in 2D. He hits it. That, that wasn't worth the wait. Corner now for Lazio. Luis Alberto to whip it in, and Savic has scored. Oh, set pieces, set pieces. My old friend, my old nemesis. I'm still perplexed about why the ball is pink. I think this is the winter ball that's meant to be shown in game when it's raining. Or not raining, when it's snowing. But the, I, I can't see any snow, so I am confused. Right, they've scored a corner. Let's score a corner of our own. Oh, okay, we've actually done it. Scalvini scored it, third goal of the season. Badia Chile, never heard of him. Anything that you could do, Lazio, we can do just as well. Sandro Tonali with the assist, whipping it in the former Milan man, and then Scalvini... Just leaps like a salmon, stings like a bee, heads it across goal. And, well, there was no one on the far post to get it away. It's 1-1. Corner again, 2-2. Two for two. Tonali, going to whip it, going to float it, head it away. He should get there first, though, to the second ball. He does so, gives it to Romero, who now is going to look to play it to Zach Hayen. Sesco, Tonali, really nice build-up play here. Ball played into the middle. No one on our team took a gamble getting into the box there, which is a tad disappointing. But the ball's winning a really advantageous position. Almada now with the ball, gives it to Musa. Back to Almada. Options in the middle. Could shoot, doesn't shoot. Holds it up. Musa shoots. It's blocked. And then Lazio just about clear it away for now. We are on top in this game. That was a good opportunity that we didn't quite take. There might still be another opportunity here for us. Raspadori, DeMarco, Zakarian. Options in the middle. Could go on his own. Tries to go on his own. Kicks it straight at the keeper. And oh my word, we're into another highlight. I need I need a gap, football manager. I need to breathe. How about Ruiz? Gives it to Oxlade-Chamberlain. Ruiz crosses in. Felipe Anderson. Oh my word. Marco, what a stop by the goalkeeper. I feel like you get a different perspective of the game when you're playing 2D. You can kind of appreciate the movement of the wide centre-backs and the roaming playmaker a little bit more. Right, Tonali's whipping it in. I thought Scalvini was going to score another header. Lazio have dealt with it initially, but we do still have the ball. Let's recycle possession. We've still got a few of our big players forward. Can they make something happen here? Ball dinked towards Raspadori. Won well. Almada, though, wins the second ball. Zach Hyen's through. And I don't know how this game's still 1-1. We have been all over them here. Another corner for Sandro Tonali. Going to float it in. Sesco wins the header, and it's tipped over the bar by the goalkeeper. Good opportunity there. Maybe, just maybe, we can make it happen on the second time. Maybe second time's the charm. It actually is the charm. Is he offside? He might be offside because they had no one on the post. I don't know how VAR checks look in 2D. Does anyone know? The tension is tense. Is it going to be given? No, I just had a thought. I just knew. I just knew. What, was he offside? I mean, look at a great angle, football manager. I mean, they are in line. That's a load of rubbish. Great header, Aspidori. That's why you're runner-up in the Ballon d'Or. Don't let this referee take your moment away from you. I mean, we're only 32 minutes into this game. We are having chance after chance after chance. Almada towards Raspadori. Is he being fouled in the penalty area? He got pushed. Could see it clear as day. Referee is going to consult with the AI, but surely this has to be a penalty. And if it is, Raspadori will assumedly be the man to take it. Indeed, he will be. The number 11 steps up. Winter football in hand. Still annoyed about the pink football situation or orange football situation. Doesn't matter though. I'm annoyed. Raspadori isn't. He makes it 2-1. Scalvini with a free kick in a wide area here. I feel like in 2D you can appreciate the movement of the system and how the, the kind of wide centre-backs work, how the centre-mids work, how the roaming playmaker kind of drops deep. I don't know. I mean, I'm quite, I'm quite enjoying 2D. There was a point in my life where I only did 2D for videos. Like, all the time. 2D was the only option we had. And people loved it. And I feel like 3D is now the mainstream option. But every so often, it's nice to go back to your roots. And when I say back to your roots, I don't mean bottling football matches. I mean the 
2D. It's it's 2-2. Two, two. Felipe Anderson has sledgehammered it in from range. And having been so massively on top in this game, I mean, how has this ended up in the back of the net? Luis Alberto, effort was blocked, drops, bounces around, and then he just smashes it into the top corner. Okay, mate. Okay, 2-2. Two, two. two minutes left and a half. Probably going to be that scoreline at the break. I am far from happy. We have been all over them, I feel like, in this game. We have been the better team. You can see our XG is 3.21. Their XG is 0.4. Of course, XG doesn't win you football matches. But, yeah, we've not, we've not been as good as we can be, I feel like, so far in this game. We've been on top. I feel like this game should be out of the taking. Well, we've won the ball in a good position here. Sesco lays it back. Zach Hyen, Sesco, lovely build-up play. Lovely, lovely, lovely goal. 3-2. Only took four minutes after shouting at the players aggressively at halftime to get the goal there. And the passing here was quite intricate. Immobile, who of course is Lazio's star man, caught out in possession. And from there, we sprung the trap. Zach Hyen's ball there is sensational to Sesco. The finish, not too shabby either. Lazio with the ball on the far side. Felipe Anderson, the goal scorer, whips it in. Scalvini wins his header nicely. Zach Hyen now looks to get the ball forward to Sesco, who takes it down well, of course. Great in the air, Sesco. And well, the Golden Ball winner, or the, the Ballon d'Or winner, I like to call it the Golden Ball, because <laughs> that's the name it is in Football Manager without the license. But the Ballon d'Or winner, he had an effort from range. He's now had another effort. He's headed it over. He probably could have had a hat-trick in this game. And well, he, to be fair, he could still get the hat-trick. Ball played forward. Raspadori, um, what's happened here? I think someone's been sent off. The ball's in the back of the net. Patrick's been sent off. What's happening? 2D made that very unclear. I think there was a red card. Well, there was a red card. No thinking about it. DeMarco hits the post. Right, they're down a man. We're up a goal. DeMarco's got a knock. Vina, on you come. Almada's not the best game. I'm going to bring in Richie for him. And we'll save on to our last sub for now. I wouldn't mind bringing Luca on off the bench to play at striker for us to try and build up some match fitness. He's still coming back from his strained knee ligament injury. You might remember he had last episode where he was kind of out for four weeks. Anyway, Lancio down a man, still creating stuff and still scoring stuff. How have they scored that? How's that ended up in the back of the net? They're, they're a, down, a down a man. They're meant to just let us win now. Isaac wins the ball off Vina. And then the ball's played through here. Who is that for a Scalvini? Oh, it's a great ball by Scalvini. I thought their attacker had got to it, but no, Scalvini. It's a good job I'm not selling the man he's replacing for like 50 million and relying on him, isn't it? That'd be awkward. Okay, 15 minutes left here. I'm going to make our final change. And uh, you know what? Raspadori, you've done well, but I think Luca can do even better for us. Let's get Luca up top alongside Tesco. Two big, meaty men, two massive forwards. To be honest, with them on the pitch, we should probably look to hit some earlier crosses, get the ball forward a little bit quicker. There are two players that are so good in the air that I'd like to think that we can catch out Lazio. I say all of this. Completely irrelevant, unless there's a very late sting in the tail here. Have, 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 have they just scored? Is that... is that Surely not. I hate cup finals against Lazio. Last year, we bottled the, the Super Cup. Uh, sorry, no, we bottled the Italian Cup against Lazio. We played Inter and went to extra time in this competition. It is offside. Breathe a sigh of relief. Was it offside? Absolutely. Clear as day. You can clearly see the two lines there. I'm not going to complain. It's now extra time. I'm not happy. Oh, do we get an extra sub in extra time? I feel like this is a very modern thing to the game, isn't it? The extra sub in extra time. But I think we absolutely deserve it. Moose is struggling. Um, can I bring in Ravella? I can. I'm going to bring in Ravella and swap him and Richie around. So Richie's playing right mid. Fresh legs on the pitch. Big meaty men forward looking to get the early crosses into the box for them. Let's see if we can, well, get our noses ahead again in this game. Vina. Number 18, plays it forward to Zach Kayan. Players in the middle, queuing up. Sesco's one of them. Benny Sesco scores again. Number 19 for the season. I know it was a little bit of a tap-in, but we're not going to judge the actual finish. Zach Kayan's ball was superb. It set up the tap-in. No, the build-up play here was nice. Vina's but through ball here, which is perfectly weighted. And then Zach Kayan latches onto the end of it. On his weaker foot, floats it in. That finishes as simple as it gets. I'm just looking at the stats for this game. How is this game 4-3? Can we just can we just evaluate this? How is this 4-3? I mean, I'm glad that we've got extra time to redeem ourselves and hopefully get a few goals in ahead like we deserve. But even so, I'm not happy. Sesco, oh, I thought he was going to go around the goalkeeper. Instead, he smashed it over. 
Okay, into this second half of extra time we go. Of course, Lazio down a man. That is really going to limit their ability to create stuff. I was hoping that we'd maybe get a second goal to really ease the nerves. I suppose we still could get it, but with five minutes left... I don't know. The, the, the window of opportunity to put this game beyond doubt is closing. As we get closer to the end, I will get scared. Ravella, though, fresh off the bench, smashes it home. Nicolo Ravella doesn't get enough love, I feel like, in episodes because he very rarely plays the episodes I show you on screen. When he's playing with the B team, he is absolutely superb. I think it was Luca as well who got the assist here. So two subs linking up. Tactical genius by me. Good job, Jack. And uh, yeah, it was Ravella who came through, just smashed it down the middle. 5-3. That should be game set and match now. I just realised, because we finished the game playing in 2D, I don't get the trophy ceremony at the end of the game, so we're denied a beautiful moment. But I'll tell you what, not a bad team display. I feel like any match where you have three players get above a nine was probably okay. 5-3, the final score. Probably could have been more, probably should have been better defensively. But ultimately, we've won the Italian Super Cup, which... I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's still silverware. You can't take that away from me. Good news as well. DeMarco's injury is only a little one. It shouldn't keep him off the bench for the next game against Genoa. But as I mentioned last episode, for this next game, I do want to play the B team. And in terms of the B team, it looks a little something like this. This is a very good team on paper. It should be a solid squad. Notto and Luca up top is going to be a little bit exciting. You might have noticed here with Luca, I've dropped the target forward. I've been trying him a bit more as an advance forward as he's been coming back from injury and playing the odd game here and there. I haven't yet decided if it's the better option, but given how well Sesco's done as an advance forward, and he is, I guess, of a similar build to Luca, if maybe just a bit quicker, I still feel like Luca probably can do a quite good job as an advance forward. So, you know what? We'll see how he gets on in this next one. Sesco's the cream of the crop. A 9.9 .9 rating. That ain't too shabby, is it? I'm going to join you guys three days' time. I need to rest Galvini. I need to rest a few other players who featured in that previous game. I'll see you in a mo. The B team's going to get a run out. Let's see how they get on, shall we? So it is official. I didn't get scared away by that Scalvini error for the third Lazio goal. I have decided to sell Badia Chile. He has left. And in return, we have picked up Benucci for 1.1 million. I mean, when we compare the two players, if we just ignore the age difference, they're, they're kind of close in ability. They're very different kinds of defenders, of course. But I do feel like Benucci is actually going to be very, very useful for us, especially with his determination and leadership. We don't really have many players quite like this. And in fact, to be fair, within Football Manager, there's not many players that exist who are this good. Let's be real. Now, with Barrio Chile leaving, he has actually now exceeded the price that we received for Soleil. 54 million for Barrio Chile, 50 million for Soleil. And if you're wondering, how Soleil done Jack since he's gone to Manchester United? Uh, not very well. 6.93 rating in the Premier League. Uh, mm, yeah, he's, I feel like we've got the better deal. I'll let you guys be the judge. So for this game against Genoa, Benucci is going to be making his debut, which is a little bit exciting. Elsewhere in the team, it's still a very, very strong squad. And in fact, I'm looking across it now. Every single player now in this team is Italian, which is pretty cool, or at least partially Italian. Of course, we've got Notto and Luca up front. Notto has scored four goals in five starts in Syria. He's been a very, very good fourth-choice striker. Gets a rare start today, which is cool to see. Of course, Luca has had his fair share of issues of injuries, it feels like, as of late. Missed five weeks over the last couple of months. So, nice to see him back in the team making his first start since his injury. Elsewhere, Pabega and Pacina play at centre mid. I'd argue that these two Two guys they're not the the world's most incredible center attacking mids but within our system i think they can do the job and they're also two players who are very good both going forward and defensively in fact when you look at their kind of roles they're highlighted for for both of them they are highlighted as being very good at center mid on attack so maybe i don't need to worry too much of course vina is going to be playing out on the left hand side He's kind of done fine since he joined the club. Eight appearances on off the bench. He's not really put a foot wrong. Does like to clock up the yellow cards, but we've not had a red card yet, so it's absolutely fine. Out on the right-hand side, we've got Richie, who, as you can see here, is now accomplished at right mid. He has been a, a player who's picked up that position rather quickly. Of course, he's not the most naturally kind of wide player, I suppose, with his crossing and also his pace. But as a wide midfielder, I think he suits the role really, really well, especially within our system where we don't really operate with typical wingers. 
I suppose. Of course, Ravella is going to be playing as the Roman playmaker, kind of playing between the two centre mids. Had a great impact last game, has been back in the Italian national team. Hopefully he can do the business for us. And at the back, I am going to play Scalvini here, even if he is going to be a starter going forward, just because I think game time for him is important. Elsewhere, Bonucci and Papetti make up the remainder of our defence, which, uh, I mean, let's be honest, when you look at it, it's a pretty good defence, and of course, last but not least, Marco still in goal. Now up to 16 aerial reach, he's just getting better. Let's make sure we do go back into 3D for this game. As much as I enjoyed the last game in 2D, 3D is the way forward. Hopefully the ball's the right colour as well. Of course, this is a rare chance for the B team to show you what they're all about. Whilst they've not had as many convincing wins like the first team, this is still a really strong starting eleven that we're able to put together using a largely rotated squad. I realise I'm sat here bigging them all up. We are now 38 minutes into the game and only now having our first highlight. Uh, which is less than ideal. Also, I've just realised we're on director. We want to be on TV, lowest height, max zoom. I feel like I'm watching the game on TV now. Richie plays it forward. Pessina, can he finish it? First chance of the game, really, for either team. It's not been a classic first half. That was missed. It probably should have been scored. Do you know I've created quite a lot early on here? I know we've not seen the highlights of it, but they've had their shots and well, for a second I thought they were going to score again. We've just been able to get it away from danger just about. I said score again then. Still nil-nil. I've not accidentally edited out a goal yet. Oh my word. Notto has a chance. Can he finish it? No. No, he can't. Another good opportunity for us, but I feel like now, well, I was about to say, I feel like now it's going to be nil-nil at the break. Hold the phone, ladies and gentlemen. Leave a message after the beep. There could still be more happening here. Luca tries to win down the header. Doesn't so. Now Gaiassi is going to play it through to Ekuban. Through for Genoa. And he hits it over as well. I'll tell you what, both teams have had chances here at the end of the half. At the break, nil-nil. Um, it's not been a classic. It's not, it's not been a very good game so far. I wish I, wish I could pretend otherwise, but I can't. At half-time, not happy. Step it up. Richie's crying. Richie, stop crying. You've got, you've got to get stronger, mate, mentally. We've got a second half to go. I believe we can turn it around. And, well, if we can't, well, by the hour mark, I've got a few good strikers I could bring on. To maybe swing the tide of this game. Zivkovic plays it forward to Goodmanson. Floats it towards the back post to Gaiassi. I mean, you know the team on the attack here? No one like this. Gaiassi inside hits it. It's blocked over the bar. You know what? I've seen enough here. I have seen enough. Pabega's on a 6.5. Zach Karyan, on you come. Elsewhere, I'm going to do it. Sesco is coming on for Notto. I've had enough. 25 minutes left, and it's still nil-nil. I feel like, based on what we've seen, we are the team that... Perhaps I'm most likely to concede the next goal, but I'm hoping with the big guns on the pitch now, maybe it's going to turn around our fortunes. Vina plays it forward to one of the big guns, who plays it to the other big gun, who plays it straight to their defence. Zach Karyan, not quite at the races yet. Uh, I think whoever that was there, number seven, left it because they were offside. But a weird highlight this one so far. Zach Karyan, Sesco, ball played forward. Zach Karyan's there, no way. Zach Karyan is different gravy, isn't he? He is absolutely mad. I mean, he and Sesco, they are the two men that in a game like this, I trust to bring on to change the match. And we're seeing it again. I feel like Sakarian plays better when I'm in an episode. Often you have players who get camera shy. It's the opposite with this man. He's a showboater. He dinks it over the keeper. 67 minutes gone here. We finally have the lead. Luca to Papetti. Is there a chance here for us? Perhaps Luca Ricci plays it forward. Sesco, can he finish it? No. That would have been a really good chance to make it 2-0 here. Final 10 minutes of this game, and it's still 1-0. And I really don't feel comfortable, because you know we're up, up really stiff opposition. You can kind of see why they're up in 7th, despite their prediction of 14th. And, well, it felt inevitable. It felt like it was coming. We've been caught defending narrow, and Goyassi is there to make it 1-1. And suddenly, with 10 minutes left, we're staring down the barrel of our first draw of the season... And what would be our third game of the season that we failed to win in the league? Zivkovic switches it over as he hits it. I mean, Marco couldn't get down to that. Can't really blame the keeper for that one. Let's make a change or two here. Luca's not played particularly well. Raspadori, get back in the team. That is my final change. I'm going to go more attacking. We're going to go a little bit more direct. And hope that that's going to be enough to turn around our fortunes. As the ball is launched to Sesco, I mean, Luca's now in the middle to pick out if he can. He won't be for much longer because I'm about to take him off and, well, that, he's tall. He's not tall enough to get to that one. 
Five minutes left of extra time. Is there a late chance? Is there a late highlight? Maybe? Probably not. Uh, apparently the assistant's raised his flag. Is that the... Is that the get Why are we showing me this, football manager? Why are we doing this? They've given me hope that something could happen. Bessina wins it. Can't get it forward, though. Vina unable to get onto the end of it. And that is full time. Not sure what that last highlight of the game was. Not sure what that performance was as a whole. The whole point in doing this match was to show you how good the B team is. Instead, we've drawn 1-1 against Genoa. Yeah, it's not gone to plan. The good news for us is it's not the most disastrous result because we have got a little bit of a gap to the teams behind us in the league table. You can see how things look at the halfway point for us. Even if Roma and Napoli were to win their games in hand, they would still be four points behind us. But of course, there is still a lot of football left to be played this season. Benucci makes his debut. Was it a debut to remember? Uh, no, he got he did get a 7.2 though. So it wasn't awful, but we didn't win. Um, not, not sure he can single-handedly shoulder the blame for that. Right, folks, that is going to end everything from me today. Of course, we've still got £70 million in the bank, but I do think I'm going to save it. I don't feel like we desperately need to sign anyone for any specific positions. One little thing just to mention, because I've seen his face and it's reminded me, Rafael Luiz has signed a new deal at the club. He was unhappy after the summer, where I maybe tried to sell him, but we, we don't need to worry about that. The good news is he has signed a new deal. I am playing him a little bit in the first team to try and give him some games time the future looks bright with him he looks really really good when we return next time i think we're going to be coming back for the champions league first knockout round we've got psg and it's alongside the games against the likes of lazio juventus and milan not the easiest run of games to be honest although juve down in 10th did actually sack Zidane. So a little interesting thing to note there. Either way, next time out, Champions League defence is going to begin. I've said that like we've won it. We're not defending our crown. We bottled the final last year. Now I feel sad. We'll end things now. I'm going to go cry. I'll see you again soon. It is me, Jack. Sorry for the 2D. It's not my fault the ball was orange or pink or whatever colour it was. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.